welcome to this episode of the ADF Architecture TV channel. In today's episode, what we're going to look at is an extension of the previous episodes on application module design. And what we want to specifically talk about today is shared application modules. And I'll refer to them as shared AMs because it just becomes too hard to say after a while. Now, you probably already know that you configure shared AMs via the model project, ADF business component, shared AM instances options. But what you probably don't know is that there's two types of shared application modules, the application level shared AM, which most people know about, but also the session level shared AM. And what we'll do in this episode is we'll just talk about the differences between them, but then from an architectural design perspective, the application level shared AM is far more important. So we're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail and specifically talk about some of the performance tuning options that you can put on the application level shared application module. All right, so this is what we're covering today. I hope it's going to be interesting to you. Let's dive right in and start talking about the different types of shared application modules. Now, in the previous episodes of the ADF Architecture TV channel, we talked about applications that have multiple root application modules. Now, it is rare, but it is going to happen. And, you know, an application has mul multiple root application modules. Root AMs is going to have lots of view objects and entity objects. You know, that's pretty standard for an ADF VC application. Now, you know with entity objects that when you define entity objects, you can also create business validation rules that look up view objects via a view accessor to validate a particular attribute, say, against the view object, maybe doing an in lookup. In addition, you know for view objects, they have, well, attributes that have list of values. And again, they use view accessors to look up the records or the values from another view object. So EOs with business validation rules and VOs with lookups use view accessors to look up data from other view objects. Now going back to our scenario where we have multiple root application modules, what happens if when you basically create your application that you have an EO or a VO in one root application module that wants to look up, well, the data from a view object exposed in another root application module. So you accidentally constructed your application such that the VOs that you want to use as view accessors are in a separate root AM from the other root AM where you have the EOs and VOs that want to do the lookup. Well, you could basically expose the view object in the second root AM in the first root AM, okay? Or alternatively, which is a pretty unknown feature of ADF, you can create what's called a session level application module. And a session level application module is one that allows you now to expose the VOs from the second root AM in the first root AM. Now let's talk a little bit about how that works. With a session level shared application module, at design time via the model project properties, by the ADF business component application module instance options, you take the root application module with the view object that you want to share with the other root application module, and basically you say with that second root AM, he becomes a session level shared AM with the first. Now what that allows you to do is in that first root AM, it now has access to all the resources of the second root application module, the one that you've just shared. And that includes the view objects that you want to use for the entity object business validation lookups, or the view object, view object list of values lookups as well. So that's how you configure it. It's fairly easy and it is described in the Fusion Dev Guides. But what's the effect of that at runtime? Now we know that the more generic concept of a shared AM is that, hey, that view object and the associated root AM would be shared across all user sessions. But let's be very clear with, the, with a session level shared AM, that's not the case. All that really happens is that shared level, I should say that session level shared application module, it just becomes a nested application module of the first root application module that you're sharing it with. So from the user's perspective, it is still a resource that is per user session. Its state is per user session. It's not shared across all user sessions. And indeed, at runtime, because it is nested AM, it also shares the connection, the transaction, and all the other facilities that the root application module would give to a nested application module as if we just nested it normally. So as we can see, the session level shared application module is basically useful for where you've accidentally, well, broken your application up into multiple root AMs and you need to share back the resources. Okay, so we've discussed now a session level shared application module. Now, 
that's probably that more uncommon one or the one that's least known so let's talk about the more common type of shared application module and this is the application level shared am Whew, saying this becomes really hard I end up being really tongue twisted anyway the application level shared am is designed to solve the following problem if you imagine with an ADF application, when a user request comes into the ADF application, basically if the page that the user request is accessing accesses a view object associated with the root AM, basically one root application module instance is created per user session and a view object instance is created per user session and the associated entity object behind the view object or the EO cache also gets created for each user session. Now that's all good and well for separating user state or the management of that state per user session, but sometimes with our application, there's going to be things in our application that, well, no user is really going to change the data. They are interested in seeing the data, but not necessarily changing it. For instance, if you think about in Australia, we have Australian postcodes, or in the United States, we have, well, we have the concept of zip codes. Across many user sessions, is the user really going to, well, modify the zip code and postcode data? Unless it's a postal application, probably not. Most of the users and the uh, most of the users are really just going to want to look up the same information, but not really maintain their own copy of the information because they're going to change it. So in order to solve that problem and basically remove or reduce the memory footprint of each user session and all the data that they have and all the data that they may view and potentially edit, this is why ADF or ADF business components has what's called the application level shared AM. And basically for the view object, well, the view object is only instantiated once and the data is shared across multiple user sessions. Now, the runtime behavior of an application level shared AM is indeed only one instance of the root application module is created. And this is shared across all user sessions. Now, it is actually a root application module for all intents and purposes. So it does get its own application module pool at runtime and you can tune it separately to all the other root AMs. And because it is a root application module, well, what it also has is a connection with the database and it takes out transactions with the database as well. So from a technical perspective, it is still really a root AM, but it is shared across multiple user sessions. Now in terms of sharing it across multiple user sessions, now we get the benefit of obviously with some view objects and the relating entity object caches, rather than being duplicated across user sessions, they're only created once and shared. But you must then, I guess, have the question, well, how does actually ADF do this behind the scenes? Because if you imagine with view objects, a view object typically keeps track of what row the user is currently on. Now with a shared AM view object, well, that must mean it must have some sort of mechanism for tracking this across multiple user sessions. So there must be some still, some state that is across user sessions. And mm, well, there must be still some tuning issues that we need to consider in terms of these shared AMs because all the types of, well, user sessions, they're all going to have little bits of state that they are carrying for the view objects across the shared AM. So can we tune that and what impact can we have on the overall performance of the application? Let's look into that. So in order to support multiple users actually accessing the view objects of a shared AM, what a shared AM does do is it does create an iterator per user session. And that way you can actually track what current row that the user, each user is on separate to each other. In addition, if you have bind variables associated with your view object, basically a row set is created per each view object and stored in query collection. So as example, imagine you had a query that said something like select emp ID name from employees where the department ID equals a bind variable of some name, department ID bar in this example. Well, separate user sessions might query that view object with a bind variable and give it different values, 10, 20, 30, and 40. And this will result in four separate query collections, one per user session. Now you can start to imagine here then is that the number of query collections that we have to support all the different user sessions can become quite substantial. So what mechanisms does the application level shared AMs provide in order to tune these query collections? Well, basically at the application module pooling side in the configurations, the pooling settings, there are two parameters that allow you to basically time out query collections based on them being too old. 
Now to read my notes, that's jbo.qcpool.maxinactiveage. And the sweeping algorithm, basically, when it kicks in every period, that's defined by jbo.qcpool.monitorsleepinterval. So this is one mechanism such that the query collections that are being used, well, basically, eventually they time out and will get swept away or the memory will get released. Now, ADFVC does actually have another mechanism for keeping the number of query collections down, and it's one that's called the maximum weight algorithm. Now, what the maximum weight algorithm does is when that pool monitor comes along and looks at each view object, it makes an assessment if the number of view objects, the number of rows associated with that view objects, and all the query collections has accessed or exceeded the maximum weights. Now, if it has, then the algorithm basically takes an LRU, a least recently used look at all the query collections, and starts ejecting the query collections that haven't been recently used. Now, the interesting thing about this option, which is driven at the application module pulse uh, side or configurations via an option called jbo.qcpool.maximumweight, is that its default value is negative 1. So this algorithm is turned off and basically you need to change that value from negative one to some higher positive value and it will start to kick in. Now the thing about that particular value though is if you think about it is it applies to all view objects and well from a view object perspective you might have some view objects where you need to tune this maximum weight over others. So how do you solve that problem? In order to do that, you need to follow a programmatic solution, and that is on your view object impool, you need to override, and I'll just read my notes here, a method called init shared QC pool properties. And inside of that method, you then call the set weight algorithm with the specific weight that you want to set. So that particular option now gives you the ability to tune each view object, the maximum weight of all the query collections and rows associated with the view object, and gives you much more fine grain tuning if you so desire. Now, just to finish off this episode in talking about shared application modules, there's one other little thing I'd like to talk about because it's a bit of a common mistake. Now, you'd be aware that with application modules, you can expose methods through either the application module or the view object level or even the view object row level to the user interface. And we call those client interface methods. They're a pretty common way for adding business logic, additional programming logic in your business services that, for instance, you expose to the front end and the user clicks on a button and it causes something to happen in the business components. So all good and well, but in terms of shared AMs, there's something you need to know. You know with the data control palette that typically you can drag in those client interface methods from, say, the application module that we're interested in. And you can drop it on the page and it will get wired up for you. Now, something that ADF does in this particular case, and you know, maybe we should be a little bit smarter about this, but what it will do is when it wires up that client interface method via the bindings on your page, is that it will treat the application module as not a shared AM, but a normal root AM or a typical application module per user session. So do you see the problem there? In fact that we want these, in terms of shared AMs, we want these methods to be working on all the view objects and entity objects for this shared AM, but unfortunately by the design time configuration, it wants to treat it as a, well, a per user session AM. So how do we solve this? Well, basically there's three pieces of code I need to show you. So in order to call a custom method on a shared AM, what we need to do in the actual shared AM's application module input class is to find a client interface method that calls the parent class find or create shared application module method. Now that method supplied with the parameters here you can see, so a package identifier, package class identifier of the shared module, a, the shared module instance name and a numerator type called shared scope application that will actually return a handle onto the shared module that's or the shared application module that's shared across all user sessions. So from there it's very then very simple then to call our custom method. So we just go am dot custom method in this example. Now, if we want to do something from the view object level, pretty much the same deal. We create another client interface met method in the view object impool, and then we make use of the same find or create shared application module method with the same parameter as previous. But then the little difference here is, is because we then get a handle on the shared module impool, is we then need to walk the data structures down to the view object to get at the actual custom method. So as you can see in this example, we've called the shared module impool am dot get departments method to get the specific view object and then our custom method.
The final bit of code that we need to see, or the example we need to see, is one where we need to call a method on a view object row. So what we do here is again we create a client interface method, this time at the view row input level, and we still get a handle on the shared application module as previous. Now, in order to call a custom method though, there's something a little bit tricky we need to do. We need to, with the shared application module, not only get access to the view object, but then we need to create a brand new row set iterator. And the reason we need to do that is we don't want to use the primary row set iterator of the view object. We don't basically want to disturb it, um, make it walk on rows and so on and so forth. So we create a new row set iterator and then via the row set iterator that we get returned is we call the iterator.first method to return an instance of a row in the overall view object. We then, as best practice, close the row set iterator. But finally, because we now have a department object, we can then call the custom method at the view row input level. And that concludes our look at shared application modules and in fact the set of episodes on ADFBC application module design. In the next set of episodes I'm going to be handing over to my colleague Frank Nymphius who's going to be looking at all sorts of technical design and architecture questions and straight off the bat is going to be looking at task flow communication patterns, the mechanisms that allow task flows to call task flows and pass data around. So thanks again for your time. I hope you'll join us in the next set of episodes on the ADF Architecture TV channel. I'm Chris Muir. See you next time.